Okay. So looking at this equation again, the x equals percent z OK, well, that's a term that was created for you. You don't come up with that out of the wind. It doesn't just poof and show up. Tom created that, and it, it's doing a lot of different things underneath. Okay, it's going to actually be looking at 248 different z scores simultaneously. And then it's going to convert those z scores into a number. That number is then going to compare itself to this user threshold that translates to plus or minus a specific standard deviation number that we're going to set once we get to the training screen. We're not there yet. Okay. So that's how that gets plugged. We decide one and a half standard deviations up or down. In other that's words, how it gets plugged we in. change the uther threshold mm -hmm. to 1.5, and that actually means plus or minus 1.5 standard cool. deviations. All right, got it. Okay. We just happen to use, or I shouldn't use the word use. We happen to borrow the user threshold to to control that term. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that happens to be. On this particular protocol, one of two threshold adjustments. Later, as we look at the slightly more sophisticated and more commonly used at this moment in time, the, the Z percent OK upper lower, all we simply do is the uther becomes the upper standard deviation adjustment, and the gther, or the gamma threshold, again, we just borrow the G threshold, becomes the lower limit. So we don't have to go plus or minus 1.5. The top can be 1.5. The bottom can be negative 0.5. So we can bias the window. OK? Those are the only two protocols we're going to look at this afternoon. This is the basic one. This is where it all started. And then it's evolved to that one. OK? But this is the, the most simplistic to look at first. OK. As we look at this first equation, we then see the rule is is greater than and again we see use equation but now it's simply x equals ct again this is another borrowed threshold it happened to used to be the coherence threshold now it's just the c key which controls the percent of z scores that we're targeting okay easy to show you from the training screen sometimes hard to comprehend with just words I'm just giving you an introduction. It'll, I'll go over it all again while we're looking at the training screen, and it's much, much easier. OK? Everybody with me? Sort of. OK. As we continue down, we see event result. When all this is happy, we then play MIDI sound. So that's how we get our tone, right? Now, the MIDI sound properties in the event wizard much more flexible than the standard protocol, or standard software, sorry. OK? Within this, you can go starting note. You pick which note the instrument's going to play. Of course, the 128 different choices for sounds. <laughs> the playing style, same thing we saw before, sustained and percussive. The modulation, amplitude pitch, on off. And the one that I like the best is amplitude and pitch. Gives it more of a musical feel when you add that amplitude and pitch. How do you do that? You go to modulation, hit the drop down. You'll have four options. Amplitude and pitch is the lower option. OK? Now, this is an important one. And this is an important one depending on your PC. If you're working with a laptop, First thing I always recommend is external speakers. External powered speakers. Not just junk little speakers from Radio Shack for nine bucks, but ones that actually have a power cord and a volume knob. And pre preferably like this set that has a little subwoofer if you want even better sound. If you're trying to survive on the sounds from your laptop speakers, you're in trouble. Okay, they're not gonna be very good and after six months it's gonna be even worse because they wear out real quick. OK? So make sure you got yourself a good set of speakers. But to get back to where I was, the reason it's important is the starting loudness level may need to be different between depending on the PC you're working with. This PC that I'm on here, the speakers are shot. If I was using the stock speakers, like they barely work at all. I have to use external speakers. 
What I like to do here is I like to give it a fairly high starting level. So I put the level at 90. And my speakers, since they're powered and they have their own volume control, I can control it there and I control it from the volume on my laptop. So I can get it to a safe level that they can hear, but it's not blowing your ears out or it's not so quiet they can't hear. Are these numbers decibels? It's a great question. I never even asked. No, it's just a, a number. It's a range. Kind of like a number on a volume that you would tune. Happens to have 128 different ticks. Okay. Loudness change rate. Now, I've met the criteria it's happy, and now I've gone up and above it. Is it going to get louder you know, by three positions at a time, or just one position? That's what the loudness change rate is. Okay, this one I like to have at one. Okay, again, a lot of this you're going to be able to play with on the fly. All of these are adjustable on the fly. You can use the the button at the bottom that literally says "Use Now" and hear different things once we get the simulation running. Okay, to find out really what makes sense for you. Note change rate only matters if we have a pitch option selected. If up here I only had amplitude selected as a modulation, note change rate wouldn't matter. But since I've chose both amplitude and pitch, I have the adjustment of loudness change rate and note change rate. Okay? Same thing, as you play with these, sometimes you'll say, ah, you know, give me two. Realize though, if you're doing eyes closed alpha type training and you get this nice big burst, it's going to go way you know, high on the scale quickly because you're going two notes or if you selected three, three notes at a time. Versus one, it's a nice gradual doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Musical scale. What type of musical mode or scale do you want to use? Each of these have a little bit different sound. You have your major, minor, blues, Chinese, Dorian, and down the list, all your different church um, modes. Okay, so you can find out, you know, what what sound do you like? What sound does your client like? What do you recommend as one of the most popular? I uh, my favorite, but again, you're talking to probably one of the most non-musical people that you would ever meet. Um, would, I like blues. I do like the Chinese with certain sounds. It's really neat, but blues is my favorite. Okay, I like that. But again, try them. Find out what you like. Everybody's different. Musical key. What key do I want to start with? Okay. Do what? When we get to simulation, we're running the session. I can be clicking on different buttons and hitting use now and hearing the different sounds. Okay. The event number is different events as part of the protocol, and we'll we'll get there in a second. Um, the play note or chord. Right now, it's going to play one note. In the future, it'll play a two note chord, three note chord, four note chord, and down the list. It's just not functioning as of yet. Okay. Now, a couple other important buttons. This event is enabled pretty important one. If it's disabled, anything you put or change in here isn't going to matter. It's not going to be you being used. Now the other one is, do I want to see it? Do I want to see it in one of those little trend boxes? Do I want to see it to see what's happening? So I can hide it if I don't want to by simply hitting hidden, but most of the time you're going to want that as visible. 